My portfolio is closing in on £19,000. We're sitting at about £18,700. And in this video, I'm going to show you how my portfolio has performed in August, talk about any of the buys and sells I've made this month, and show you some of the dividends that I've received. I'm also going to take you through each of the portfolios that I have on the free trade and trading 212 apps, and also show you my spreadsheet. Let's get into the video. So this here is my portfolio on free trade. As you can see, I have £12,600 in the account. This is the main bulk of my portfolio, and I moved a big chunk of it over to Trading212 a few months ago, and I'm working on moving all of it over to Trading212 in the future. If we have a look over the last month, my portfolio has gone up over £200, and that's just market gains. That has nothing to do with money coming in and money going out. That's just the performance of the portfolio. So I've had quite a good month. If we take a look at my top positions, I have realty income at £2,100, which has done okay this month it's up five percent and that's generally because of the interest rate news where interest rates are probably going to be coming down in the us and the stock is performing on the back of that and then we have my second biggest position in this portfolio which is vwrl now this is the FTSE all world etf and that has gone up six percent this month so generally the world markets are doing quite well and have done quite well in august my next biggest position is unilever now unilever again has done okay this month They've performed recent, reasonably well since about the 20th of August, where it looks as though they've gained about 5%. And then my next biggest position is Microsoft. Now, Microsoft has had a bit of a shaky month. There is a lot of speculation with tech stocks. They seem a bit overpriced at the moment. And then there was those design issues with the chips, which has affected all the big tech stocks. And so they saw a bit of a correction, but then they've actually had a bit of a jump up in the last few days or so. But Microsoft is one of my bigger single positions, and it's actually up 52%. And then we have GSK, which is my next biggest position, and they are up 7.7% this month, which is really good considering they had a big dip a few months ago in June, um, and they've had a bit of a recovery. Now, I do think that there's a lot of UK stocks which have been recovering recently, so the stock market in the UK has done quite well. The FTSE 100 has done quite well. Um, this is probably off the back of some of the news that's come out from the new uh, Prime Minister and the new uh, Labour government. Next position is Pepsi, and they haven't done very well this month at all. I think there's a lot of issues with these consumer staple companies that they're having a few pricing issues, and a lot, a lot of people are actually buying these products because they seem to be a bit more expensive. Then my next position is Google. Now, Google, this month, they are down about 2.3%. This is one of my better performing positions as well. They're up 50% in my portfolio. There's been a lot of speculation with Google regarding their monopoly. There's a lot of fear regarding Google stock itself, simply because the government may consider them to be an illegal monopoly at some point. And so the government may force them to split out some of their companies into individual companies. In the future, this may be good for shareholders because they will have stakes in individual companies, which then could perform well on their own. But it isn't good news in the short term. The next position is SSE. Now, they're an energy company, so they actually performed reasonably well since the election of the new government uh, but this month they've actually been flat and then my next position is Lloyd's and they've actually been up five percent this month they've had a pretty good month I think off of the back of interest rate news but again in the short term interest rate news could be good for them but I think interest rates coming down will be bad for the banking sector or just the consumer banking sector so my next position is Tesco one of my smaller positions I'm actually up 40 percent on Tesco which is ridiculous and this month I'm up 8.7 percent now, Tesco has been doing really well since the start of the year. They're about up 31% since the start of 2024. Now, this is quite incredible for quite a defensive stock for Tesco. But realistically, they're doing quite well because other, the other big supermarkets have actually fallen off a little bit. They've gained a bit of market share this year, and they're doing really well with all the cost pressures that have been happening over the last six months to 12 months. They're actually doing really, really well. And then my next position is Amazon, and they've actually done quite well this month, up 10%. They had a bit of a hit in the last three months or so. That is because of all the, the tech issues that have been going on. But this month, they've actually recovered quite well. So that's my free trade account. I'm just going to show you the dividends that I received this month. I actually only received one dividend this month, and it was from Realty Income. So this is my portfolio on Trading212. As you can see at the top, I actually have £6,000 in the account, and I have about £3,800 invested. So I have about £2,200 sitting in cash at the moment. My total return so far for this portfolio is actually only £100, about 3%. But I've only had this portfolio open for about two to three months, simply because I'm moving my portfolio, my main portfolio, over to this Trading212 account. 
So my four positions in this account are the Franklin FTSE India ETF, Rolls Royce VWRL, which I have some in this account and some in my free trade account, and then Visa. As you can see, they're all actually in the green. So this month they've actually recovered quite a bit because when I did this update last month, I think most of them were actually in the red. The Franklin FTSE India ETF has been pretty flat this month, down 1.6%. Over the last three months, they're actually up 6.7% and over the last year, they're up 30%. I'm hoping that this ETF does outperform most other simple ETFs over the long term, but in the last few months, they've actually not been doing quite, quite so well. I have 15 shares in this ETF and my position is only up about 1%. My next position is Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce actually had quite a good month, they're up 10%. I think generally they're doing quite well off of the back of the, the whole London stock market doing quite well. There's been some good news in the UK and I think that they're just riding the momentum off the back of that. I have 140 shares in Rolls-Royce, about £700, and I'm up about 10%. So before this month, I was probably flat at up 0%, but this month is had a good return up 10%. My next position is VWRL. Like I said, I've got 13 shares in this account, and I've got 13 shares in my free trade account, which I just showed you. So this month, they're down 0.5%. But overall, I'm up 1.5%. I think when I combine both of them together, I have 26 shares and I think I'm up about 10 to 15%. And then my next position is Visa. I think Visa, I'm just trying to continuously add more into the portfolio because I do believe in the company. This month, they're up 4%. In the last three months, they're up 1.4%. In the last year, they're up 13.85%. They've had quite a bad, quite a bad six months or so, but I think when interest rates begin to come down, people will spend more. And so I think that Visa will do quite well off the back of that. I have about six shares, just under six shares, worth £1,262. And I'm up about 2%, which is apparently 4.4% of gain and uh, a loss of 2.36% for Forex. So that's my portfolio on Trading212. Now let me show you my portfolio all combined together on a spreadsheet. So this is my portfolio all put together on one single spreadsheet. As you can see, my portfolio value in total is £18,700, which is my portfolio value of £16,400 plus the cash sitting in the account. So I've got a total return of 17.6%, which is made up of £444 in dividends received and £2,085 in gains in the account. So that's a total return of £2,529. Yes, and that's easily seen here. Uh, you can see I've invested £14,300. I have a gain of £2,085. That gives me my market value of £16,428. The cash sitting in the account of about £2,200. And my final portfolio value of £18,700. That cash will get put into the portfolio. I just like to surgically put it into the portfolio. I like to wait for a good day or a good week to invest that money in. Uh, it's just at the moment, it's just been sat there a little bit longer. I think it's sat at around 13% of the portfolio. As you can see, most of my portfolio is in the US. 35% is in the UK, 45% is in the US, and I have about 20% in ETFs. My goal is to make that 25%, but it's a bit of a slow process. If I'm adding two to 300 pounds into an ETF every single month, it doesn't add that much of a percent, but over the long term, it will eventually be 25%, then maybe 50%, then maybe 75%. So this pie chart here, you can see the position sizing by percent, for each of my positions, you can see that VWRL is 16% of the portfolio, the biggest position. The next biggest position is Realty Income at 13%. And then we've got a few other positions at around 8 to 9%, which is Visa, GSK, Microsoft, and Unilever. This purple bar chart here shows the wins and losses, which is the percentage gain. So I have a, most of my companies are actually positive at the moment, and the only one that's negative is Pepsi. I have considered selling Pepsi recently, but I think that is my brain looking at that red and not liking that. So I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to reevaluate why I'm holding Pepsi in the account before I actually decide what to do with it. Now, this is the dividend dashboard. So you can see all the different uh, statistics and, and values about my dividends. And this is now my second year of dividends that I've been receiving. So I've been investing for about three years, but this is my second year of receiving dividends. I saw I received my first dividend in September 2022. Now we're in August 2024, so that makes up two years. So my first year of dividends, I received £128.77. And my second year of dividends, I received £315.34. 
This is the bar chart for dividends by month. And you can see here that I only received £7.87 and have had a steep drop off in the last two months. That's not because I'm moving money around, it's just because of the monthly dividends that I've been receiving. So I would expect next month I have a bit of a spike up. It wouldn't be as much as uh, the, the dividends I received in June, but it'll be a bit more than what I received this month. So these values here, I have total dividends for 2022, 2023 and 2024. So 2022 dividends was £15. 2023 dividends for the full year was £216. And so far in 2024, I've received £212. So I would expect next month that my dividends go over my total dividends for 2023. And we would still have about three months to go in 2024. The change that's happened in 2024 in terms of dividends is that I've, is that I've switched away from purely dividend investing to actually having a more diversified portfolio. So I have dividend paying companies and I also have growth companies and ETFs. So that is why my dividends haven't really skyrocketed this year, simply because my portfolio is very, very split. So this tab here is the transactions month on month. It enables me to see the buys and sells that I've made in the month on a very nice looking spreadsheet. So in August, I added £436 into the account or invested that cash that I have in the account into stocks. And you can see here the two positions that I invested in. One was the VWRL. So I added £299. So I think that's about three shares. And then the other one was Visa. So I actually added £136 into my Visa position. This tab here is the dividend calendar. So it enables me to see which stocks paid me on which month. It enables me to look at the next month and decide who is actually going to be paying me if I know that they're paying a quarterly dividend. So in June, which was two months ago, I would expect those companies to repeat in September. Let's just take a look at those companies. So I received a dividend from Microsoft. I would expect that to pay me in September. I also received a dividend from Realty Income, they're monthly, so I received one of those in September. Pepsi, they paid me in June, so I would expect to see them in September, but I do have a feeling that they're more likely to pay me at the start of October, not the end of September. I haven't looked at the date yet, but that's what I expect. Pesco, they pay a bi-yearly dividend, so I don't expect them to pay me until November. And then we have Unilever, again, they're a quarterly dividend payer. Uh, so I would expect to see them in September as well. Then we have VWRL, which is the ETF, and they are quarterly, so I would expect them in September. NVIDIA, I don't hold that stock anymore, and Google, I'm not sure if Google do pay quarterly or if it's just like a one-off dividend that I got in, uh, in June, so we'll see what happens there. So I do expect to receive dividends from Microsoft, Realty Income, Unilever, and VWRL, and I would expect it to be somewhere in the range of about £32. So the thing that I've found interesting about investing with such a small portfolio is that most of the gains that you see from your account is actually just putting money into the account. If I'm adding £600 a month into my account and my portfolio is sitting at about £18,000, that's about 3% of the portfolio. So every single month, if I'm adding 3% or you know, if I'm adding 5% or some you know, months ago, months ago, I was adding 10% to the portfolio. I was adding that much money into the account where most of the gains in portfolio value actually come from additions. So there will come a point where my additions will be negligible. There'll be, you know, 0.001% of the portfolio. But at the moment, most of the gains do come from additions. Yes, I do see, you know, the odd one, two, three, maybe even five to 10% gain every single month, but that doesn't usually happen. I might see half a percent, I might see 1% gain every single month. And you don't see that really as, a, as making a massive impact on the portfolio. So I think it puts into perspective that it is a long-term thing. You know, you just adding money into the portfolio gives you that gain. And in reality, you know, over the last three years, I've made a total return of 17.6%. That's not great. You know, um, I've made some money from buying and selling stocks and I've lost some money from, from buying and selling stocks. And some of my stocks are up 50%, but some of my stocks are down a few percent, you know. And I think at some point I'll probably look at this purple bar chart and I'll see 100% up, 200% up. But I don't expect to see that 
this year. I don't expect to see that next year, really. You know, um, the the goal is to just keep adding to the positions and just make sure that you're being consistent with adding to your portfolio. And I think that's one of the key things I'd like to sort of talk about. Well, that's one of the key things that I'd like to make as a point in this video is that it's more about adding to, to your portfolio rather than thinking about percentage gains, especially when your portfolio is, is, is small like this. Anyway, thank you for watching this Varanted video. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Any suggestions on improvements to the video content or ideas for content going forward? And please give me a comment below and I'll give you a reply. Thank you.